today on Rappler. Fishermen recover a U.S. drone in waters off the central Philippines. After a series of shootings, President Aquino needs more time to consider a total gun ban law. And the Philippine Stock Exchange breaks the 6,000 level. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Fishermen recover a U.S. drone in waters off the central Philippines Sunday. Police and naval authorities say locals found a 12-foot drone floating off Masbate Island and dragged it to shore. The drone, model BQM-74E Chakar 3, was found near San Jacinto, Masbate. Philippine Navy Captain Romel Galang says, quote, It appears to be an unmanned aerial vehicle or AUV used in reconnaissance. But U.S. Embassy spokesperson Tina Malone disagrees. She says the drone is, quote, not armed and not used for surveillance, but is, quote, used as an air defense target in training exercises. She adds the U.S. Embassy is still trying to confirm the nature of the drone and how it got there. The U.S. has been training the Philippine military to use unmanned drones against terrorists in Mindanao. In an a in interview with AFP last year, President Benigno Aquino confirmed the Philippines allows U.S. drones to overfly its territory for reconnaissance flights but are not allowed to make strikes. Since 2002, Two, about 600 U.S. forces have been on tours of duty to the southern Philippines as part of the U.S. government's counterterrorism campaign. Masbate, where the drone was found, is hundreds of kilometers from the terrorist areas. U.S. troops do not operate there. But communist rebels waging a decades-old insurgency operates in Masbate. Which prompts the question, are U.S. drones being used against communist rebels? Despite increased clamor for tighter gun control laws after violent shootings last week, Malacanang says more time is needed to study any change to the law. Deputy Presidential Spokesperson Abigail Valtis says the president needs more time to study proposals on a total gun ban law that would restrict gun ownership to the police, military, and security professionals. Depends on what the contents of that law will be. Because when you say comprehensive firearms law, does that, to our mind, that would involve everything from the importation rules for importation rules for procurement for uh, requirements, etc. So we will have to see what is in that proposal for a comprehensive firearms law. She also responds to questions whether the president, a known gun enthusiast, will support the bill. First, let's not pigeonhole the president. Wag po nating pangunahan yung pangulo. In the past, marami pong nagsasabi na, ah, si Pinoy, ito yung gagawin niya kasi tingin natin ganito yung preference niya. But it is, uh, allow me to say that the president has defied perception uh, so many times in the past. There are only nine session days left before Congress adjourns on February 9th. But House Speaker Feliciano Belmonte says the lower house has time to tackle gun control legislation. Belmonte says the lower house will take up pending bills calling for stricter gun control in the country and hopes to finish debates before Congress adjourns for the campaign period. There are around 20 pending gun control bills in Congress. A day after a shootout between a criminal gang and police at a checkpoint near the town of Atimonan, a police official says at least three of the 13 alleged gang members killed are members of the Philippine National Police. Calabarzon Regional Police Director Superintendent James Melad identifies one of the slain suspects as Superintendent Alfredo Consamino. The two other policemen are believed to be Gruet Mantuano and PO1 Jeffrey Valdez. All three work at Mimaropa or the Mindoro Marinduque Romblon Palau Police Office. Melad says the three slain policemen were in the vehicle with the alleged gang members who started firing at the policemen. He adds, quote, when they got to the checkpoint, instead of submitting their firearms, they fired at our policemen. After much anticipation, the Philippine Stock Exchange breaks the 6,000 level, kicking off what many analysts are calling a good year for the Philippine economy. On Monday, just 10 minutes after the market opens, the main PSE index hits 6,001.17 points, an indicator of positive movement in the prices of stocks. 
The PSE index later closes at 6,044.91, up by 1.23% or 73 points from Friday's closing. The stock exchange posts four record highs in the first four trading days of the year. Optimism is fueling investors' appetite for stocks, backed by the U.S. fiscal cliff deal, the launch of the European Central Bank's bond buying program, and continued investor confidence in the Philippine economy. A glossy magazine with pouting models and racy romance tips in Myanmar sparks debates in the conservative nation. Since hitting Myanmar's bookstores in November, the magazine has become a must-read among the young and curious. The magazine earns an adult rating. Its editor brushes off accusations the publication is too indecent for the country, saying, quote, this magazine is a combination of sex education and entertainment. A former CIA official says bloody interrogations like those depicted in a movie about the hunt for Osama bin Laden never happened. Former CIA official Jose Rodriguez says no one was bloodied nor beaten in the interrogation program he supervised from 2002 to 2007. In a Washington Post article, Rodriguez says the torture scenes in the film Zero Dark Thirty are pure fiction. The movie tells the story of the decade-long search for bin Laden after the 9-11 attacks and a dramatic raid in May 2011 on his hideout in Pakistan. It begins with a scene showing the torture of detainees who provide critical information for locating bin Laden. But Rodriguez says the filmmakers got the dog collar scenes from the abuses committed by army personnel at Abu Ghraib in Iraq. He adds, no such thing was ever done at CIA black sites. Japanese scientists and broadcasters say they have footage of an elusive giant squid up to 8 meters or 26 feet long that roams the depths of the Pacific Ocean. Japan's National Science Museum succeeds in filming the deep sea creature in its natural habitat for the first time, working with Japanese public broadcaster NHK and the U.S.'s Discovery Channel. They spot the squid at a depth of 630 meters using a submersible in July some 15 kilometers east of Chichi Island in the North Pacific Ocean. NHK shows footage of the silver-colored creature which has huge black eyes. It swims against the current, holding a bait squid in its arms against the backdrop of dark oceanic depths. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number four, Clark International Airport records a 71% increase in international domestic passengers in 2012 compared to 2011, making it the country's fastest growing airport. It accounts for 1.3 million passengers, many of them taking advantage of budget travel. Clark International CEO Victor Jose Luciano says growth is expected to be sustained in 2013 because connectivity to Metro Manila has improved. At number five, the World Food Program says hunger, ranked number one on the list of the world's top 10 health risks, is also the world's greatest solvable problem. The World Health Organization says hunger killed more people than AIDS, malaria, and tuberculosis combined. The Food and Agriculture Organization says 870 million people around the world suffer from hunger, yet the world produces sufficient food for all. At number seven. The five men charged with gang rape and murder of a 23-year-old medical student will appear in court for the first time on Monday. If convicted, they will face the death penalty and will be charged with kidnapping, robbery, and conspiracy. Police say they've DNA evidence to link the five to the killing. A sixth accused, aged 17, will be tried in a court for juveniles. The men allegedly took turns raping the student and attacking her boyfriend with an iron bar. At number eight. A defiant President Bashar al-Assad addresses Syrians in a rare public speech and proposes a new constitution and cabinet to resolve the country's 21-month uprising. He ignores the opposition's demand for him to step down and instead justified his military crackdown. Assad says, quote, Everyone who comes to Syria knows that Syria accepts advice but not orders. Assad's speech comes after last week's visit by United Nations envoy Lakhdar Brahimi, who tried to push for a negotiated solution to the conflict. Human rights groups say more than 600,000 people died in protests that sought to remove Assad from office. And at number 10, astronomers say two rogue asteroids and two comets will blaze across the skies this new year. The asteroid 99942 Apophis is huge enough to deliver the equivalent of more than 25,000 Hiroshima bombs if it smashed into the Earth. 
But NASA says there's, quote, a tiny chance of an impact on Earth on April 13, 2036. On February 15th, asteroid 2012 DA14 will be so close, amateur astronomers will be able to watch it. Comet 2011 L4, or PANSTARS, will be at its brightest from March 8 to 12, and Comet ISON could become visible to the naked eye by late November. It last returned to Earth about 10 million years ago. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page, which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that have gotten the most votes on the mood meters. So let's take a look today. The top story today, U.S. drone crashes off Masbate. You have 37% angry, 8% um, don't care, 5% annoyed, 5% afraid, and 13% happy. Um, Aquino against the death penalty. This is on the gun, the gun, um, sorry, this is on over the weekend. 52% happy, 38% happy, uh, angry. Uh, and today's new high, new milestones, PSEI breaks 6,000 level, posts fourth all-time high. 91% happy, that contributes to the story that's gotten the most number of votes to the mood of the day. Today, most people are happy. Well, that's Rappler's newscast for today, Monday, January 7th, 2013. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.